Where have all the airships gone? An airship is exactly what its name suggests. The airborne equivalent of an ocean liner, capable of covering vast distances in style and comfort, and offering such luxuries as a dining room, metal cutlery, and even a piano bar. Beautiful, mystical, and supremely dignified, it's hard not to think of the airship as an excellent idea. But a few bits of bad PR put paid to them. An airship floats in the air, so it has to be filled with something lighter than air. Originally, this was the easily produced but highly inflammable hydrogen. Later airships and all modern ones use the more expensive but much safer gas that gives you a dull duck voice when you suck on a party balloon. Helium. There are three basic types of airship. Rigid airships are huge and built around an internal metal structure, with the lifting gas contained in separate cells. Semi-rigid airships are smaller, have some structure, but also a collapsible section. Blimps are really just specially shaped balloons, sometimes with a gondola slung underneath, but all of these terms are used quite loosely. The world's first true airline, Deutsches Luftschifffahrts Aktien Gesellschaft, was formed in 1909 using Zeppelin airships. And between 1910 and the outbreak of World War I, it carried 34,000 passengers on 1,500 journeys. And although a number of these airships were lost in crashes and fires, there was not a single crew or passenger injury. World War I saw Delag's airships transferred to the military, where they were responsible for the first bit of negative airship PR. Zeppelins were used for the bombing of civilians, notably in London and Paris. In England, they became known as baby killers. But between the wars, the airship entered its golden age. Many people still believed that fixed-wing aircraft would never be safe or reliable enough for long-haul travel. Britain and Germany in particular plotted a glorious airship revolution. Britain's state-funded R101 airship crashed in France on its maiden voyage to India, and although the impact was light, the whole ship was consumed by fire when the hydrogen ignited. The privately funded R100 rival airship was scrapped as a result. Germany's airship program was more impressive. The most successful of its ships, the Graf Zeppelin, remained in service for nine accident-free years. It made 144 ocean crossings, circumnavigated the globe, and remained aloft for a total of almost two years. But it is the later Hindenburg which is remembered because it was the subject of the world's first televised disaster when it crashed in a giant fireball at Lakehurst, New Jersey in 1937 on its 63rd flight. As a result of that, all other Zeppelins were scrapped. Ironically, Hugo Eckner, the pacifistic boss of the Zeppelin company, had demanded that the Hindenburg be filled with safe helium after seeing how hydrogen had destroyed the R101 during its crash. But only the USA could produce helium in sufficient quantities, and America had banned its export to Germany following the rise of the Nazis. That was the end of the airship dream, but the idea didn't disappear completely. Small airships, most famously the Goodyear Blimp, were still used for advertising and as stable camera platforms. The Zeppelin company was reformed in the 90s to make medium-sized, semi-rigid, passenger-carrying airships. Most recently, the US has produced the Northrop Grumman Long Endurance Multi-Intelligence Vehicle, which can stay aloft for three weeks at 20,000 feet for intelligence gathering. Other airship evangelists envisaged truly massive airship freighters that could shift huge machine parts and other giant loads all around the globe using minimal energy. So the airship may simply be suffering a brief hiatus caused largely by the hazard of using hydrogen. The airship may rise again. Get it? Why not subscribe here? Uh, you can hear me answer more of your intelligent questions, more historical stuff from Knowledge Badger, and more of our live experiments. This is Head Squeeze, squeezing your head in the interests of making you a more renaissance sort of man or woman.